All right, returning for the final game of week week one, Rascal Jester versus Hawks Gaming. Now this is somewhat interesting as it it's the more even of the matchups. Uh, Rascal J Rascal Jester is still favored, but is opposite ends of the bracket uh, from DFM and Sengoku, just due to the way the matches were kind of set up today. Rascal Jester, of course, kind of the favorites coming into this, and if Rascal Jester are still trying to experiment, uh, if their first game is indicative of their play, you know, for the rest of today, I would really enjoy to see Rascal Jester continuing to try new things, like these all-in style comps, and with Hawks Gaming doing the same, you know, if Rascal Jester not playing in their comfort zone and trying to expand their, like, spread their wings a bit with what they can play, maybe Hawks Gaming has a chance here. You know, in the mistakes that happen, Hawks Gaming might be able to capitalize if they double down on their sort of divey kind of comps. Yeah, we're still only first week for pretty much every region. LPL's probably the deepest, but there's a lot of experimentation that can happen in the meta still. So... Teams that are willing to experiment are going to figure out what works and what doesn't way faster than teams that just stick to the standard poke comps over and over again. Right, and this is definitely the kind of... This is like the last real time you'll have to try and experiment, right? It's coming into where, you know, Worlds is on the horizon. You have that on your mind going forward. And of course, Summer Split is really the one that's very commonly looked at as... You know, are you adjusting to the meta? Summer Split's always the one that matters to a lot of regions. And the LJL will be no different as they're going to have their opportunity to try and battle for positions. But in these first few weeks, you know, you can you can battle back. You can always play the meta things. Uh, you know, you've all, you always practice what's meta. But if you're the team that finds innovation, it's not just... It's not just a win, it's multiple wins while the other t while you're putting pressure on the enemy team to try and adjust things or you can exploit gaps in their bands and you know that that's sort of the like prolonged meta that split long meta development that kind of comes through from that sort of thing. Now Rascal Jester of course is also playing adjusting to their new roster. Uh, Hawks Gaming adjusting with the swamps and then Rascal Jester being the ones that picked up two new players between uh Pink and, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me, I know it, Nagi, excuse me, uh, Nagi in the support position, although both of them did, uh, did seem to be playing okay, Pink, of course, was up against Pyrian in the mid lane and did kind of struggle there, but that being said, you know, kind of has an opportunity to now pull it, run up against Dasher, and hopefully is a little bit more, a little bit easier of a time for his pro play debut right Pyrian is a experienced player with so much history behind him dasher just currently off a of roll squad so it might be a bit easier of a time frame yeah still veteran status but in different places and that adjustment will at least even up the grounds between the two of them there now as we're kind of as we're closing out this week and we we're talking about our first impressions of a lot of teams I just kind of want to run through with you so far What are some of the teams that have been impressing you so far in this week one? And what are some teams that kind of you know you you're excited to see going forward? I think Sengoku is easily the most impressive team after week one just showing great draft knowledge and being able to execute on the comp you draft on both sides, they drafted a comp that had to react to what their opponent did, right? And it was more as a counter to to it. Mm -hmm. And then they drafted their own game plan and stuck to it, recognized their weaknesses, played around them, and claimed the 2-0 the for the week. Definitely going to agree there. Sagoku, so always a favorite, and really, you know, kind of showing their... It, it when you show that mastery over the meta as a whole it really starts to come bring things together for your team however i also want to look at v3 esports as a team i feel like boogie is the player that is on my mind 
non-stop after this week just watching him as a player watching him going going through this uh through these series where now there's a couple carry junglers in the in the pool you don't have to play jarvin trundle every game you know now when you're giving him these opportunities he's showing that he's able to execute and able to make the most of it i'm excited to see where he goes going forward i'm hoping that we don't see any more jungle nerfs to keep him alive but for the game at hand hawks gaming versus rascal jester we're a little bit bit into this band phase already and we got a little bit of an interesting spread from the side of hawks gaming katarina fiddlesticks being the first two banned away on their side is Katarina a pocket pick for Pink, possibly? I feel like it's not the first Katarina ban I've seen, but I don't remember if it was against Rascal. Possibly. I did. Uh, it's a little bit hard to get a lot of the info on um, some of the play-in tournaments that Pink was a part of, uh, or uh, like open tournaments. So uh, the match history there isn't uh, something that, I, that we can directly get access to. So... I don't know if this was a champion that maybe he had a couple all standout performances on. So possibly maybe a little bit of a a little bit of introspective into the into the history of Pink with that ban as well as Fiddlesticks being banned away. Something that we haven't seen hit the rift yet, but doesn't hurt to doesn't hurt to get rid of that, especially with how hard Hawks Gaming were punished before in their vision gaps. Definitely don't want to give over Fiddlesticks as the Trundle lock-in is coming in. And I believe this is the patch that we did see the Trundle nerf, or is that one coming on the 10.12? I would, um, I think that's 10.12. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Either but... Either way, uh, they did talk about how the phase rush was coming in for Trundle and, you know, like, just giving him that move speed option is still a decent scrap option with Graves. Can kind of be kited, but Trundle with no tanks up so far is a little bit of an awkward one. The other thing is, of course, grabbing the Wukong. You do get that priority throughout the top lane and actually are going to allow the top lane pool to be pinched a little bit after seeing the Wukong picked up there. Yep, just opting for the Nautilus, securing their bot lane. I, it's, I seen the Trundle so early, it feels, not only did they not have any tanks drafted just yet, and currently they only have the Nautilus, but also, usually a lot of the Trundle value comes from pillar slows, right? And your ability to rush onto people, that's where Trundle gets most of his value, and mm -hmm. Ezreal and Graves trivialize the pillar, really. Yeah, both of them have abilities to dash over the pillar. So it's a little bit of an interesting interesting case. I've commonly talked about how I am not a fan of Trundle Jungle, but for a game like this, maybe Hawks Gaming have something up their sleeves. It's remained to be seen as a couple mid laners banned away. Here, Renekton also taken off the table. Possibly see an Aatrox picked up here for the top side, but a Malphite comes down. Okay. This is kind of an interesting one, as... It's... I You understand the idea, right? I think this is the first pro play Malphite we have seen in a very long time. But... Definitely possible. Negates aggression from the Wukong in the top lane. You know, it a full armor Malphite is just a, a absolute monster to try and beat down. Trundle, of course, does get value from now having an uh, ulti target, but you retain the mid lane priority. I I am I am very curious to see where this Malphite goes. I think now we understand why they pinched the mid pool so heavily with the Azir and the Zoe ban. They wanted to open up a Malphite pick and, and give their mid just a counter pick now. Right, and I suppose it does kind of offer a bit of option select. You know, you can send now with the Galio even locked up a little bit more, you can send the Malphite in or on top of it. You, the the knockup you can throw a smoke screen on top of which adds a little bit of disruption into there 
It's an interesting one to be sure. We have not seen Malphite around for a long time, but Hawks Gaming has a very scale-heavy comp, a lot of damage, both AP and AD, towards the later ends of this, of this game. But Rascal Jester... And a Malphite engage is hard to deny. There are very few things other than flashing away that can deny a Malphite engage. Also, being an online tournament, Malphite jungle is a little bit interesting because... Or, excuse me, Malphite engage is a little bit interesting because it's a lot harder to flash away when you're in, when you're dealing with that online reaction time. It's not like the, the pro play stage where, you know, you have a, that few extra you have that little bit of extra time which really makes a difference in being able to flash a malphite engage but we'll see how things go for them something also interesting here is i do like the synergy of the malphite galio following recent galio buffs because for malphite he just wants to stack as much armor as possible right and he's being put into against a comp where that's generally okay until much later in the game he doesn't need um Arm, a magic resist item until maybe even third or fourth item depending on how early game kind of plays out yeah and beyond that when he ults in if he has a galio engage or a galio follow-up even if dasher is in a position to put out damage onto the malphite he'll gain that magic damage shield to protect him right it adds that magic it adds a bit of magic resistance or magic shield for him just adds another shield on top of a malphite who's already quite the tanky champion now the other thing that this sort of adds is malphite does offer a decent amount of gank assist with the slows helps graves get his phase rush off so that they can he can follow wukong all the way through but the thing that I would be looking at is this bottom lane, and I feel like the trundle opportunities of using the pillar on Nagi on the on uh, on Nautilus will present a couple opportunities to the bot lane, and I feel like that's going to be the point of con point where you want to be focusing if you are Hawks Gaming. You know you're gonna have trundle R for Malphite if you ever go top lane, so that's not something you really need to worry about. But getting this Aphelios online as soon as possible, it's really going to be the difference maker if Ezreal is not able to, if Ezreal, you know, is going to get online, especially in an overall somewhat low damage comp on the side of Rascal Jester. Right, but as the Aphelios, very immobile carry, you see Malphite Galio and you know you are the target 90% of the time. And... The amount of zone control you can make, even just for your, just to do damage on the front line, right? Even if mm -hmm. the Trundle R is the Malphite, the Aphelios can't walk up into that team fight or that skirmish. Right, that is one knock up away from a swift <laughs> Malphite covered death. He'll be out instantly. You have to, on reaction, flash the Malphite R, or you're done. You can't flash away from Galio Engage if you actually get hit. Right, and this is sort of this is going to be a point at which you know execution is really tested on the side of hawks gaming but also if they're able to clean up their mistakes from earlier where they had a lot of gaps in vision a lot of periods where you know their top lane was just getting caught and hung out to dry just due to not having vision uh not being not playing entirely aware of where the enemy team is rotating through and they had a lot of odd-ended deaths for it. And while Rascal Jester, I don't expect the same level of execution on that front as a team like DFM, it's still, you know, that there's still mistakes and they still can be punished. However hard or light they are will be up to Rascal Jester. Right, and it's worth noting that in week one, we actually haven't seen too much success out of the um, out of tank top laners. We've been seeing a lot of tank top laners just kind of be starved for resources and not being able to get as tanky as they need to be. We we like to t say that top tanks don't need resources, right? They don't really care if they lose lane or they'll still get value anyway because they're tanks, right? But at some point, you need to be able to stand there and be a stat stick for the likes of an Aphelios and a Corky, and if you're too far behind, you, you're just, you just die. 
Right, and sort of an interesting turn is that Malphite's value comes from his R, so maybe that's something he can look forward to, but hiding just out of vision. They will find Honey here. Dredgeline might be able to land. It will just burn the flash. As Honey will have that burned out there. A little bit of a cheeky invade there coming out from Rascal Jester. Gets a free flash for them and is nothing to sneeze at. Is now jungles are returning to their normal states. It looks like Trundle will be starting on the bottom side if those are his pings. No, he is opting up towards the top side to start things off. And Rascal Jester are still in a position they could pose for an invade. They might be going for a late one. It looks like Hawks Gaming are going to be found out here. Cog Cog is a Malphite. His horse just going to be able to, or is forced to walk away from this one. It looks like Tussle already started Q, so can't get the W move speed to get onto him. And it will be splitting the map vertically here as Tussle will have his time on the top side, which I feel does benefit Rascal Jester in the early parts of this game. Right. And worth noting that the flash burn on Honey is really good for the bot lane of Rascal Jester, who don't have the biggest kill, kill pressure, but the lack of a flash will allow them to walk up and take trades at least slightly more aggressively. Right. It's the difference between those last... Any questionable trades or when it comes to that you know, all-in moment, not having the flash means you can't, you know, that's damage you can't trade, that's moments where you're going to be worried about what you can and cannot push for. And we talk, we talked about how Aphelios has pretty much fallen out as, as a lane bully. He used to be really oppressive in lane, he would take trades and then heal the right back up with Severum. Uh, they've reduced some of the scaling on his Q, Oh. A slight engage. Yeah, Nagi uh, missing a dredge line there. Will get kind of dragged around for it. W shield going to eat up a little bit of that damage as now Hachimecha returning to the bot lane once more. Doesn't have a great position for a gank opportunity as Nagi's going to flash in. Will be able to lock up Pooh for a little bit, but that's not the person you want to be locking up. Flash for flash overall. No other summoners burn, but... Now Honey and Pooh both summonerless in the bottom side as now Tussle's going to be coming down there. Looks like Rascal Jester are willing to take this fight off the flank he comes. Hachimecha goes in, he's all in onto Honey, but the hook will land just to drag him out of the way. Pooh was going very low, Honey as well. Arts on the backside trying to kill what he can. It's a party down in the bot lane as Rascal Jester finds two. Corky going to trade one back immediately as Pink is trying his best to kite out. Hachimecha has a little bit of HP left to work with, but not enough. As Pink is going to go down, Aramic immediately flashing in for that one, and overall a 3 for 2 that ends up benefiting Hawks Gaming. Just an early bloodbath. No one even, barely anyone level 4 to start this off. <laughs> and it's a 3 for 2. It was uh, a bit of a scramble for things early on here, as things got, and nobody died fast enough for this play to go well for anyone and it just feels like Hachimecha going all in onto Honey here was a good way to start things off and then Art goes in and is just so hard to get all the damage that he needs to onto Honey and is forced to flash away by that point teleports are coming in Hachimecha is trying to get around here to try and help but immediately flashes out Aramik is able to pick that one up while the Nautilus dies up towards the top side in Overall, it remains to be seen who exactly is coming out 100% ahead of this one. Net gold advantage for Hawks Gaming, uh, but Aramik, having burned the teleport for that play, and Cog Cog not able to follow up with the teleport, because a level 4 Malphite is not a threat off of the TP play. That being said, Aramik did pick up a kill for it and is picking up Sheen, which does help him kind of bully out the lane matchup. But it will remain to be seen if that really is the difference maker on this end of the map. Meanwhile, the mid lane pink picking up two of those kills gets an early, an early Hextech Revolver, which does add a little bit of potency to his, to his trades. It's really on the graves to be making the most out of the Galio gank assist in that mid lane though. Right, it's definitely, you shouldn't ignore the two kills on the Galio as he will bring a ton of damage to any 2v2 skirmishes or other, any types of skirmishes that break out. And 
Re realistically, that's where they have the majority of their advantage. Right, playing off of the Galio ultimate now adds just more potency to not only his ult, but to the plays that he's able to pull off because of them. The damage once he's in there and he's already ulted into the middle of anyone. So it will definitely come in handy as we're cresting into these level sixes on most of these laners. Now, Rascal Jester not exactly punishing the mid lane as hard as they can, and it see, and you can see Dasher opted for the lethal tempo, so is opting for more damage on the later end of things. But we might have another fight here starting up as Nagi's going to take the brunt of the engage here. But here comes Hachimecha waiting in the wings. Who with no flash? But it does not look like they're going to be able to finish. Hakaka got his ult, his TP canceled as Arumik used the ultimate towards the top side. They did make the call to back off after that cancel, and Pink was not in position to make the hero's entrance. Definitely could have gotten so much worse for either team. Right. TP canceling actually really changed the tide of who, of how far that could have gone. Right, that definitely could have been an, a three-man ulti if that teleport is able to go through, but it, that's sort of unfortunate for Rascal Jester, and something that they need to worry about is... That is a long cooldown to blow for just a for just a Wukong R, and also not having Pink in position to utilize the hero's entrance means that you you had an opportunity and poor positioning on two different lanes ended up meaning that you completely missed out on getting a huge win. There is now. A win opportunity presents itself for Pooh as he finds a good hook, and that will be Nautilus going down. Pooh picking up that kill in the end as Honey only was forced to burn heal for it. That's not exactly the solo kill you want to be seeing with a laner that, or with two lanes really, that both opted into buying a coal. Right, the, uh, the Eladios will do as much damage as he needs when he has the Severum uh, Crescendum weapon combination mm -hmm. and they just land the death sentence burn down the nautilus i think through aftershock if not aftershock was down it's even cleaner but right and it's just not much you can do there if you're nagi he did have flash available to him although it might have been coming off cooldown and not 100 percent sure but meanwhile on the top side tussle now scaled into this level six is looking for an opportunity will get spotted out on a pink ward but aramik has ultimate they can look for the chases Going to go in here just for a little bit of an extended trade. Utilize the auto Q with the Sheen proc just to add a touch of extra damage while Hawks Gaming is rotating their team for this Rift Herald. I, I definitely like holding the ult on the side of the Wukong. You don't want to trade ult for ult really when there's a potential for a fight, right? Uh, right, especially when you know your team's going to be coming in. If Ezreal and Nautilus do end up showing up there, you want to have... You want to have the ultimate to just add to your dive threat onto the Ezreal or to the Graves, whoever you end up making your target. Right, and now look at the Malphite. He needs to respect that they were just multiple members top lane. He needs to give up at least some minions. Right, and it's sort of the same story that we've been seeing, and you mentioned this earlier, where tanks in the top lane are just being bullied and pushed around. Malphite wasn't able to get to most of that wave. He does have a decent CS right now. But he still needs a lot of time before he's able to get to the items he needs. Not any, only one ruby crystal as far as getting towards his sunfire if he ends up going down that route. You definitely need the bramble against something like a Wukong. Just a lot of healing in the kit as we Hacha might Mecha see. looking for an opportunity here. Will get found out as Hawks Gaming's returning for a ward adventure. And feels like Hacha Mecha has enjoyed more than his fair share of time. On this bottom end here, Hawks Gaming finally getting wise to the Graves' ways as... Meanwhile, in the mid lane, looks like all is fair and good, except Dasher has been getting a lot of the benefit of the CS advantage. Almost 40 CS lead to his name as Pink is hanging around here. Tussle's not going to be able to engage too hard on that. He knows there's a Galio ult waiting in the wings and... As it seems right now, Dasher is just loving the way this game has been going. He's been picking up a, a, a huge farm lead. He got a decent amount of pressure and uh, kills and assists off of that early scrap. 
The Rift Herald's here to cash in on a couple turret plates is going to be burned down a bit by the side of Rascal Jester, but plates cashed in on nonetheless. Right. The CS lead in the mid makes sense as it's a melee versus ranged matchup, but beyond that, we also see pink trying to roam and get into positions for these ultimates for plays that really aren't panning out and that will cost cs over time and when you can't land these plays on a champion that wants to roam so much you just fall behind so much right you need these opportunities to start working in your favor and as it stands right now rascal jester has just not had all of their ducks in a row to really get this game going almost a 2k gold lead now for hawks gaming in a comp that's already scaling, this is not a boding, boding well early game for the side of Rascal Jester. However, we haven't seen Rascal Jester execute on their comp yet. We have not seen the Malphite R come in. We haven't seen the follow-up from Pink with the ulti. And we haven't seen it work as designed. So, if Hawks Gaming is still able to kind of stunt that and keep them away from running the playbook that they have drafted up, could just be curtains for them, but it will beg. It will all come down to when Rascal Jester makes a play happen. How hard can they drive it home? And this week we've seen plenty of comps that have a good game plan, a solid team fight potential, just not be able to execute on them because they lose lane too too hard and just don't have the opportunity to even execute on their combos. Mm -hmm. Speaking of executing, it looks like here comes Pink off of the teleport. Gets a nice little root there, or a snare there, excuse me, onto Tussle. As the death sentence lands, but nothing of value. Here comes the death charge to knock up Honey. They're going all in, has to battle past a turret to get onto him, but Honey's going very low. Pink trying to get in there to finish him off, but the Conqueror is keeping him alive for now. As overall, Hawks Gaming go three for one now. Plays are getting better and better for the side of Hawks Gaming. All engage tools used on a trundle and what looked like it looked like honey was about to be run over by the Ezreal, the the Nautilus and the Galio, but he's able to stand tall with crescendo damage and just force them all off of him and get these picks. Exactly that, and we'll watch this one more time. It's a good start off for things. You get tussled down, you have the jungle advantage. But in the moments they start looking for a little bit more, it sort of goes wrong where you can't get the full team onto Nagi, or uh, excuse me, onto Honey doing damage. It actually came up to Aramik with a huge flank there, getting a three man knockup, prevents the rest of Rascal Jester from going in, buys Honey and, and Dasher enough time to belt out some damage that Rascal Jester is not able to continue the fight in their favor. Right, the knockup on the Galio and the Malphite allows Honey to dish out damage on the Ezreal, force him off, and by the time Galio and Nautilus come in to try and finish off Honey, he has Crescendum damage stacked, he has Infernum, he does so much damage when Honey when he's not under threat of art. Right, and now first item completed on Honey as he might be finding Cog Cog out here. Bad position with no summoners up, no ulti on Cog Cog, but will it even matter as the lantern comes in? Honey says no, he's willing to fight this one out. And once again, Rascal Jester is just not able to execute. Hawks Gaming are getting the better end of every one of these plays, and it started as a three for two. It turned into a three for one. Now a three for none. Hawks Gaming are just finding out Rascal Jester at every turn. Just perfect team play. You wonder why why Honey feels so safe to walk up there. It's because he knows his team is waiting in the wind, even if he face checks a Malphite. Right, and he goes up to check. He's like, something is amiss here. Something's wrong. But that is an ultiless Malphite that is exactly what he is without his ult. He is just a rock. He is not enough damage. With Graze being that as far back as he was, they can't exactly burst out Honey in that moment. So, as it seems right now, this is looking like Hawks, Hawks Gaming's game to lose. Will remain to be seen how things end up playing out. Cloud Soul on the menu means that Hawks Gaming can't have any free, uh, free soul that helps kind of hammer and hammer this one home although cloud soul not exactly bad for the side of hawks gaming it does offer a lot for uh wukong moving with the ultimate to get multiple members knocked up as well as adding adding just 
cooldown timer for the uh, for the ultimate on the Aphelios. You know, that's multiple roots that could be potential. A flamethrower ultimate will rip through the lines of Rascal Jester when he's already 2, 1, and 6 on the Aphelios as well as Corky, a 700 gold shutdown, 4, 0, oh, and 4 as Dasher is having a, having a fun game in this one. Right, the Hawks carries are just so accelerated. Not only is the Corky hard to initiate your combo on, but the combo is kind of all you have. If you don't get value off of the combo when you're this far behind, you, you lose instantly. And all your targets are going to be so hard to get on top of. The Aphelios is your only real immobile target, and you might not even have enough damage to just finish him off. Right, and this is sort of... It's an unfortunate game when you're looking at it, and I I hate to talk about it like it's over until it's over, of course, but it, it's sort of an unfortunate game for Rascal Jester because you had that scrap that looked good and then it didn't go your way, and then the, one, the way back in that you had got immediately stuffed out by Pink not being able to get an R off, Malphite not being able to complete the teleport to utilize the R, and at that point, you have no snowball to to utilize what is an undeniable engage. You know, that's the benefit, excuse me, that's the potential strength of a Malphite, is the ulti, there, there, there's almost nothing you can do. There's no stopping a Malphite R that's just barreling towards you, but if there's no damage to be following up a Malphite R, it's a lot less scary. Right, and... We talked about what happens when these tanks fall behind, just barely finishing his tier 2 boots. He has no magic resist for the Corky, and the Corky's only getting stronger, halfway to a rapid fire. Mana Mute's not even uh, fully upgraded. Right, this is a bad position, and speaking of bad positions, Tussle might be in one for himself, but Nagi throws a dredge line early, trying to greet out a bit for Dasher, ends up taking damage on the backburn as the flamethrower comes in, but here comes Aramek, multiple members knocked up, he's going for more, he is going to find the Ezreal on the backside, meanwhile his team is 2v4. Dasher not finding a rocket there, but has another opportunity, Get no splash damage there as the Q will go through, Aramek finds two there. And for the for the rookie player here, finding a little bit of value in those plays is exactly what you want to see for your confidence moving forward. It's just absolutely the worst case scenario for Rascal Jester. You never want to be using ults defensively with this comp, and that's just what you have to do as your team gets caught out like this. Right, and it looks almost like it could be something as you try to get an onto Tussle here, but... Once Pink is in, his team is just not in a position to follow up. Look at how much time Art spent CC'd outside of casting his ultimate. He gets CC'd, he gets dashed on, and there is not much left to write for that one. And this is... This is one of those games that in, in other regions, we might start asking other questions unrelated to the game, but... What's your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> you know... Uh, I, this might be a cop out. Really enjoy Dragonite. I have one of the first oh, Pokemon. I, I, that's a good one. I had always seen Dragonite. He looks just—he's so just derpy looking. He looks like a cartoon dragon. I want to like give him a hug every time I see him. I love the evolution line too because he goes from like elegant to a little doofy cute dragon yeah he's this like he's this tadpole dragon type of almost looks like a very eastern style dragon that's just very soft and lovable and then he just turns into this derpy looking also can i just say i love the idea of a dragonite learning thunder punch <laughs> it just that derpy dragon loving ch just Oh, I love him, and then he just is just like, yeah, you see my nubby little T-Rex arms that are, like, circular? It's like, it's like the little hands you draw on, like, cartoon dogs, and just punch. I, I'm sorry. And you can blame me. You can say, Caster's not talking about the game. 99% win percent to Hawks Gaming here. I don't want to hear that this game was close. Yeah, I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to find it. I know in one of the anime. Oh, as we have a face check. 
yeah, we might have an opportunity here. Boo's just gonna find a free death sentence as Nagi has nowhere to run. Here comes an ultimate, a good knock up here. We'll trade. Oh my uh, Nearly God. a clone. Oh, the, Krish the Moonlight Vigil flies in. Otto's flying all over the place. There is just nowhere to run for Rascal Jester as this game is being drawn to a quick and swift end. Yeah, you know your game is donezo, and the only way you can get a four-man Galliol is by having your Nautilus face check the enemy team. Right, and even then, that was just to try and save him. It wasn't even anything that they could capitalize off of, as that Malphite is just paper to this Corky. 700 gold shutdown. Yeah, 700 gold shutdown on both carries. This was a free game for Hawks Gaming. And that is going to be one in the bank for SoftBank Cox Gaming as now we wrap that, up week one of the LJL Summer Split. That might have been fastest game of the week. Yeah, that we definitely it? felt it close. definitely felt like the game that was decided very early on. I thought we were gonna have some extra Pokemon talk, right? Maybe wait for a dragon or two. No, they just end. I was really looking forward to delving into the anime <laughs> of Pokemon, to be honest, but we'll get as, there after the stream. <laughs> as fate would have it, that is going to be this game. Thank you all for tuning in and for anyone who dropped a follow today. It is much appreciated. I have been Dr. No, joined by Reaper Meister on Color Commentary. For those of you interested, you can leave a follow here or on my Twitter to know when I'm going to be going live next. Twitter is in the little description area below. I think I have a social link on somewhere on the twitch interface there that you can find i'm going to be going live again of course same way just to explain it once more is we is day one i will always be doing it side by side with the ljl stream so that will be four games back to back and then the next four will be on the following day if you're looking forward to more content i will be doing some player preps and some game analyses throughout the week this week or at least I want to try to do them on the intermittent weeks as much as I can. But keep an eye on my Twitter for that. I will be tweeting those out. If you're looking for any of the VODs, if any of the matches you missed, or you want to go back and watch some of the spring split, my YouTube does have all of the VODs. I will be uploading them most likely sometime tomorrow. You can go ahead and check out there if you would like to try and find them. For now, though, I have been Dr. No. This is Reaper Meister signing off, and thank you for having us. Bye, stream.